Can everybody hear me okay? Wonderful. I am honored to follow Nicole. Um, and before I get started, I will give you a few dates. These will be the only dates. There will be no quiz. But um, I just want us to kind of roll around some events on the timeline that this program kind of straddles. Um, and oftentimes when we look at history, it can seem so far away. But one of the great things about music is that it can make any experience immediate and visceral. And I, I just want us to remember, first of all, 1619, the first enslaved Africans are brought to Virginia, colonial Virginia. Um, and then uh, Pergolesi in 1736 writes the Stabat Mater. Then we get the Emancipation Proclamation in 1863, and then my people free themselves in 1865, Juneteenth. So the Pergolesi is kind of in, in smack dab in the middle of when my ancestors would have been making up these spirituals. And when I think of spirituals, they are so many things to me. Incantation, um, a tether to hold mind and spirit and body together in unspeakable times. But they're also a technology of remembering. They're a technology of memory of cultural heritage and holding on to what makes you who you are. And so I think it's important to realize that while Pergolesi was writing the Stabat Mater, my ancestors were writing, thinking up, transmitting orally these songs that they call spirituals. Uh, there's one last date that I will throw in, which is 1713, which I believe is when Sally Hemings was born. So situate those dates in your mind, 1619, 1713, 1736, 1863, 1865. So you're kind of oriented now. Now, as I said, there will be no quiz, but I will tell you that since I am the son of a minister and a music director um, and a teacher, I will divulge that um, whenever a black preacher says, I'm not going to hold you long, they're lying. I, however, have not been ordained, so I will try not to hold you too long. We'll see. We'll see. You can time me starting now. Um, my parents met at Fisk University. Uh, my father was there um, to uh, lead the jazz ensemble and to work as an assistant with the Fisk Jubilee Singers. My mother was there to be the head of the English department. Um, he definitely married up, <laughs> um, but I was born into spirituals history, lining out history, as Nicole referred to lining out tradition, and my parents, um, before I was born and, and when I was a kid still, were working on researching a guy named uh, Claude Joseph Johnson, or Dr. Reverend C.J. Johnson, who was a big star in one of the earliest forms of gospel music called Old Time Song Service. It's got a few different names, but it's adjacent to lining out and a very, very kind of close precursor to gospel. So when David asked me to talk about, uh, you know, the stuff that I wrote and the, the things that these musicians are so kindly and so wonderfully carrying out for me, I figured it was important to start with why I would even write these things. I write a lot of music that is so-called non-idiomatic, music that is not based on you know, African-American or black genres like spirituals or gospel. I write a lot of music that has no obvious connection to spirituals. So when I arrange or transcribe a spiritual, there's got to be a reason. Because, and this is said with no false humility, spirituals are pretty good already. <laughs> So it's not like I would think, or any composer in their right mind would think, oh, I can elevate this. It is already spectacular. It is magnificent. But the reason to write these kind of arrangements, these kind of pieces that take their base from spirituals and go in a different direction is because, one, spirituals are early music. And early music, if it is to live, doesn't stay back then. It's done in real time, in real life, in modern times. Sometimes with modern instruments, sometimes with early performance practice instruments, but still it's done in 2022. We don't leave it in the past. So that's one reason. 
Secondly, the traditions that Nicole talked about, and also jazz and blues and R&B and hip hop, they've all come from spirituals. Every single sacred and secular genre that black people have made has in its roots, whether it's lyrical conventions or harmonic or melodic contours, all of them have roots in the spiritual. So as a black musician, it's almost impossible for me to, to escape spirituals when I write. They're in my ear and they're in my heart and in my body because I grew up singing them. The reason that what I wrote is so weird, <laughs> and the musicians can attest to this, is because when you grow up singing spirituals, at least in my case, especially in the church, you realize that spirituals are living in a way that does not allow them to sit still. So, for instance, um, the spiritual that the Calvary, the piece that you'll hear later on, is based on, um, and I'll lean away from the mic, the, the, the written down version goes like this. Calvary, Calvary, Lord, I want Jesus to walk with me. Sometimes it's surely he died on Calvary. Simple, right? But when you grow up singing spirituals, you grow up singing in a different way every time. So I'm sure you heard that with Mahalia's version of Amazing Grace. She probably didn't sing it twice the same way. <laughs> every single spiritual that I learned, I heard it first, and then I heard somebody sing it four different ways next. So if it was Calvary, it would be something like, Calvary, Calvary, Lord, I want Jesus to walk with me. It's going to be different every time, right? So growing up hearing these spirituals, both in the old style, unaccompanied, extemporaneous form and the Fisk Jubilee Singers uh, versions, I got used to the idea that a spiritual does not stay. It is like water. It is always there, but it is always moving. It is fluid. So then it becomes easy to write things that are kind of weird because after you've gone through about a hundred different permutations of the same tune, then you just put them together and you make the violin play this part of it, and you make the soprano sing this part of it, and you make the countertenor sing this part, and the gamba play this part. And then you've got this uh, palimpsest. I hate using SAT words, but I'm sure you guys know what a palimpsest is. This, this accretion of layers, this layering. More layers than phyllo dough, phyllo pastry dough. And so you get these pieces, at least for me, you get these pieces that go in all these different angles at once because it's like a memory, right? We've, we've learned through science that when you remember something, it changes every time a little bit. And so your recollection of it 10 years down the road is a collage of both what happened and what you have remembered happening. So that's what, that's what happens when I try to write anything with a spiritual in it. It's moving, it's shifting, and if I can catch it in one place and kind of stick it to the wall, this is what you get. Um, and I'm so honored to get to do this, especially with early instruments. There's such a specific sound that gut strings and that kind of uh, instrumental construction give you. And I'm also just moved beyond communicating uh, to have singers like Brianna and Patrick singing this because they're of the blood and they know the style and it's in them, so I don't have to explain hardly anything. <laughs> um, having said I don't have to explain anything and after having spent a few minutes explaining, um, I will now pass it to uh, the musicians. Can I, can I do that, or is there something else we have to do in between? All right, so they're going to take it away. This is the uh, actual world premiere of Calvaried by me. Thank you. <laughs> 